6 to 11. Praise the Lord. I'm glad I'm a Christian. I'm serving the Lord. I'm reading my Bible. Believing God's word is wonderful. Isn't it? Despite all the trials, all the tests, all the mockings and scoffings, I'm glad I'm a Christian. I'd rather be a Christian than to be back out there in the world. Amen. First Corinthians 2, 6 to 11. And let's read, and shall we read with our understanding? Before we read, I'm just going to have a brief word of prayer as we break the bread of life. A gracious Heavenly Father, once again, we are represented here, we are in your house. And Father, uh, we come with our weary bodies, but our spirits are awake and alert for the truth of God's word. We pray that you will anoint the written word. Send the fire of God upon it and cause it to live. And open our open eyes that we may recognize who we are, where we come from, where we are going, the journey of life. We commit ourselves to thee now, Father. Bless each one, Father, and strengthen us in this hour. What a great day to be aligned in when the race is almost done and the sun is setting in the west. Thank you, Lord. Take praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus Christ for the glory of God. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Let's read. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, not theology, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom which is which God ordained before the world unto our glory. This hidden wisdom was left there for us to glorify us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Praise God. Hallelujah. For God hath revealed them unto, but God has revealed them unto us. The princes of this world didn't know it. The theologians didn't know it. Nobody knew it, but God has revealed it to us. Amen. What a day. Don't take the seals lightly. Don't take the message lightly. That God has chosen you one out of a million Amen. to reveal his word Amen. for this hour. That's right. Thank you. Amen. People just go on your line through the message. Oh, I believe the message, and it's a sing song, and I go to church and come home, go to church, come home, and it becomes more of a habit of a tradition, more than a revelation. That's right. But when you begin to recognize, but wait a minute, well, you know, uh, he, he loved me, and then dying, he saved me, rising, he justified, buried, he carried my sins far away. Here I am now, and the God of heaven has opened the eyes of my heart. Amen. That I might recognize him the word. Yeah. What nobody else could do, he gave yeah. us the ability, yeah. amen. amen. And made us to be uh, seers of the word. Yes. Knowers of the word. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. And when he knocks on your heart, you recognize him. Yeah. The word. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. So eyes have not seen, nor, nor ear heard. Neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. For God, but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. No theology. You're just reading your Bible and a burst of light. Amen. All of a sudden, the scripture you read suddenly opens up. Amen. 
doesn't look like much. That's revelation. Mm. Brother Pat said that's the most powerful thing, Satan hates it. Mm. You know why? If you are reading a theology book or you're reading one of the Bible studies that they normally give on TV or uh, whatever, the devil can read. He's reading the same thing you're reading. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But when God, Brother Brandon said, comes and reveals something to a man, it's in his heart. Mm -hmm. The devil doesn't know that. Mm -hmm. He said, he only knows when you act on it. Mm -hmm. Or if you went and talked about it before you acted on it. He said, and I know better to talk about it before I act on it. He says, it revealed to me, I act on it before Satan has a chance to do anything, and then you'll see the miracles of God. Right. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So revelation is our strength. That's Amen. right. That's why he said, don't think about what you're going to say. Oh, I studied the message longer than you. I said, that doesn't mean nothing like that. Amen. Because it's all by revelation. Right. That's Amen. why a child Amen. could could step up here and God would speak through a child. Amen. God just needs a body. He doesn't need your knowledge, your wisdom. God bless you. Praise God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. God bless you. Please be seated. So it's wonderful to know that God has revealed this unto us. And that he uh, prepared this and reserved it. And now is the season when he's revealing it to us. Mm -hmm. But what I'd like to uh, really get at here is as a, last Sunday I was speaking about the seed and how Jesus said that he was the corn of wheat and it was necessary for him to die and to fall into the ground. And if he didn't die and fall into the ground, then. Uh, he would abide alone and, and like that. Now Paul is saying if the princes of this world knew they would not crucify the Lord of glory. Yeah. In other words, God, we, we serve a God with a plan. Do you believe that? Yeah. Our God is not a random God. Uh, he just does things wild and uh, like that. Even when it appears like on the day of Pentecost, it appears like it was fanaticism, but it was not because it was with the plan. Is that right? Yeah. It was an orderly chaos, if I might say that. In contradictory terms, of course, but it's true. Orderly chaos. That's Brother Graham said, rain doesn't come just like that out of the sky. It's got to be ragged, jagged, black, and booming, and then the rain comes. He said, it always looks like confusion going on. But in the middle of that, God comes on the scene. Amen. So in the same way, <coughs> Jesus, in the unveiling of God, Brother Benjamin said that Jesus spoke in parables. And the reason why he spoke in parables was to hide it from the devil and his children, but to reveal it to his children, his, own, his God, God's children. That's why he said, unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, to the disciples. But unto the Pharisees and Sadducees, it is not given. It's a parable to them. It's a mystery to them. What's the revelation to us? Is that right? Praise the Lord. And here it is. He spoke everything in parables to blind the devil so he couldn't understand what God's plan was. But God's plan was, like in anything, a man's a seed or children are in him. Amen. Eve was in Adam. The entire human race was back there in Adam. You know, have you ever heard the parable that you may be able to count the seeds of an apple that are in an apple, but you can't count how many apples will come out of that one seed? Amen. Right. Amen. right? It's the same thing. Jesus was speaking that in a parable that it's necessary for me, the corn and wheat, the original seed, to go into the ground so that I can multiply myself. Amen. But he spoke in the parable so that they didn't understand. And the prince of this world, if he knew better, he could not. That's the worst thing he did was to crucify the Lord of glory. And to bury a seed. You know what you're doing? You're, you're not killing it. You're already killing the seed when you bury it. You're actually giving it a chance to germinate and to live. Amen. And that's exactly what the devil uh, tricked himself. In other words, the snake is so vicious that he bit his own tail. 
and, and, and poison himself. Death killed death. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so here it was that uh, uh, if he said we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, uh, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known that they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You understand? We would have been still locked in him. Right? Praise God. We would have been locked in him if the devil had not crucified the Lord. Right. So when he crucified the Lord, mm. out of him came the blood, the Holy Ghost. Mm. Amen. Brother Graham said the red part fell on the ground mm. and the, the spirit part of it, you know, went off and came back down on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, came back down the us. But praise the living God that in another place he says, but that blood, he said, the blood, the church is the blood of Christ by the Holy Spirit being in the world. Amen. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You recognize when, you, when the, the Bible tells us the life is where? In the blood. Is that right? So each one of us is similar to a blood corpuscle of God with the life of God in you dilating and manifesting God's life in you. So the life is in the blood and the church is the blood of Christ by the Holy Ghost. That's why symbolically when he shed his blood, the red part that you can see, that part fell on the ground. Amen. Red fell on the ground. That's where it fell. Praise God. And we are here. We are part of this work. And we are now redeemer. Redeemed by the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes, redeemed work. Redeemed by the precious blood of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I also spoke to you on Sunday and I mentioned how that Jesus himself uh, was the great seal. The seal of the Father. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. In other words, God or the Holy Ghost was locked in Jesus. All the fullness was in him. So uh, it wasn't available to go on for everybody at that time because he had to die for us. That's the reason why all the prophets, all the patriarchs, under the dispensation of innocence, human government, country, law, uh, you know, grace, right on down to this hour, they all had to wait until he was crucified and then went preach to the spirits that were in prison waiting. They were waiting by faith. According to Hebrews 11, they had to wait by faith. Before he died, they actually believed the redemption. So when he died, then he could go into the prison and say, Say, you have no rights over them because they believed unto this blood. They believed unto this resurrection Amen. and Amen. took them out. Praise Amen. God. Amen. And he took captivity, captive, Amen. and sent back gifts unto them. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They were captives of the world. Amen. Amen. Captives of Satan. Then he made them captives of the world. Amen. And then he led them back into glory. You'll find that back in the book of Psalms when he was taking them back to the angels and who would. Uh, he says, Open up your everlasting gates that the Lord of glory may come in. The angel said, Who is this Lord of glory? He said, The Lord strong in battle, the Lord mighty to save. Amen. Thank you. And the gates were opened, yes. and he led all of those saints that he had taken up right in. David was speaking the prophecy, of course, mm -hmm. led them and took them back. So Abraham, Isaac, all of those prophets and patriarchs that were there before our time are already in the presence of God, and they are waiting on us. Right. Is that right? Amen. But now, because he was building up a body through, the, uh, through all of these ages, amen, and the body is, was, uh, is not going to be completed until the head comes back on the body. Just like in, when he was building the physical body of Adam, the Bible said Adam was, the body was laying on the ground, right? And, and, and then when it was complete, then God breathed with the breath of life, yeah. right? So it's the same way through the ages, he was building his body back, but not with dirt, with earth, man of earth. We are the dirt to, that God used, amen, to build back his body. Predest you predestinated piece of dirt, brother. <laughs> <laughs> amen. 
But that's what we are. Amen. Amen. Uh, you see, when that blood dropped on the cro off the cross, uh, I would, you know, it's far fetched, but put it this way. That's almost like dropping on a predestined piece of dirt. It was predestined to drop there forever. It could drop anywhere else. Because Brother Bram said that was the hill Adam died on. That was the hill uh, the Lord uh, Abraham went and asked him to bury him. This was the, those prophets by revelation, they all almost got buried in the same place. That's right. Because by revelation. Amen. They always said, take me back, take me back, don't leave my bones here. They want to go back. Amen. The same way. Praise God. So, we see that we were all in him and we were locked into him. Amen. Amen. So, until that seal was broken, we could not be made manifest. Right. Because we were all in him. Amen. Praise God. Look, it's the same way. We were in God's mind. Because he thought about us before the foundations of the world. Do you believe that? Yeah. Praise God. You are the mind of God. And when I say the mind of God, not like a man mind. Similar, but not the same. Because if you're in God's mind, God knows everything about you. Mm -hmm. right. Beginning, end, every single thing he knows about you. Yeah. Right? So, he knew you as you are before the foundation of the world. We were in his mind. And like you, when you think about something, after a while, you know, you want to speak it. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So we were in his mind, then we ended up being in his mouth to be spoken out. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we spoken out there and in word form. Uh, our representation, our theophany released, our, and so on. Uh, by the spoken word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just the same way Brother Brown said, you know when he said, let there be light back there? He says the same light shining now. So you don't have a different sun. Mm -hmm. The effects of his word is, is just gone. And it's accomplishing its work. And it's going right on through until it goes back to eternity. Amen. It's the same right. thing with us. Amen. So we come out of God's mind. Uh, we were in um, his mouth. And then we were made revealed. Praise the Lord. With, a, with natural Adam. We were in his loins. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then we got ex expressed by the instrumentality of our mother. Mm -hmm. And we were made manifest here on the earth. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, actually, the word comes into the heart of a minister, comes into the heart of a believer. A man comes into the heart of that believer, of the, the heart of that believer becomes pregnant by the invisible union of the word of God mm -hmm. and your soul. That believe that word or receive that word. Mm -hmm. Then the word produces what? A new birth. Amen. It produces a birth. Amen. That invisible union produces a birth and you were born again. Amen. You become what? A new creation mm -hmm. in Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, your soul changed, but your physical body being born in sin, he had he just had to redeem, do some redemption. Jesus was born in by virgin birth. So he didn't need redemption. Praise God. He didn't sin, so he didn't need redemption. But because we were born in sin, shaped in the good, he come to the world speaking lies, we needed redemption. Amen. You believe that? Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we needed redemption. And so what happened? See, if we have remained in the loins of Christ, in the Lord Jesus Christ, spiritually, is mine. Is hard. If we had remained there, we would not have been expressed. It's like a man having an idea and never has the opportunity to, to actually create the thing or make it or do what he had in his mind. But here it is. If the princes of this world knew God's plan of redemption, they would not have crucified the Lord's of glory. Because instead of having one Messiah, he ends up with a whole bunch of Messiah X. He ends up with a lot of little small, not Jesus's, but Christ in one. Amen. Anointed by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to carry out the will of the Word of God. Amen. And we are all representation of that Word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Brother Brandon knew his representation. It was on the Malachi 4 5, Revelation 10 7. Do you know you were a part of this Word? Amen. Amen. That's right. 
the Holy Spirit has to reveal to you, and you alone will know which part of the word you fit. Amen. Amen. That's, that is the reason why he hid our names where? Under the seal. Because human beings have to have it that no matter where they are, darkest night, brightest day, when you're in a crowd or you're alone on the mountaintop and you heard a voice calling your name, Mary, or John, or Jane, it causes you to turn around. Is that right? You repent from whatever you were doing. Because that's what repent means. Repent to, which means to turn around Amen. and go in the opposite direction from how you were living from. Amen. So your name gets called. So he had to hide our names under the seals because we were his children and he didn't want Satan to get at us. Amen. He didn't want Satan to be able to get at us Amen. like that. So he hid our names under the seals. Because we are the, especially us here in this last day. Because we had to wait until the last stage. And if he knew who we were before this time, he'd kill your grandfather. He'd destroy your mother. If he knew beforehand whose names were under those seals, and that's what I'm talking about briefly tonight, the bride's names were hidden under the seals. Amen. Amen. If he knew all of that beforehand, That's so true. he'll have killed your ancestors. So that in your path of life, traveling down from Adam through all those thousands of years, mysteriously through each one of your ancestors, until that germ got here, and then you were made manifest, he would have cut them off. So that you wouldn't get here. No, the devil, the devil doesn't care about killing millions of people. Nobody's in this area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look what he did in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Look what he did uh, to the Jews during the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care about killing millions of people. It's trying to cut off the seed of God. That's right. Trying to kill off the effects of the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's right. And the power of God that dwells within us. Amen. 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 Praise. God, because we were predestinated for a purpose. That's right. Amen. And he knows the difference. We are not servant seed. Amen. We are, we, we are, uh, the brother Brown said, you are not really creatures of time. You said you come from God. You're going back to God. You come from eternity. You're going back to eternity Amen. because you're an eternal being. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. How can this world hold you? This world can't kind of hold you. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Do you know you're bigger than your body? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're a spirit. Mm -hmm. So your body is just a representation so I can go, oh, Glenn is over there. <laughs> but if Glenn had no body, I wouldn't know Glenn is over there. <laughs> right? See? Praise God. I'm using it tonight for my illustration, Brother Glenn. <laughs> Praise God. Glory <laughs> to God. Amen. See, so so your body only gives you location, geographical location, so I can know. Oh, uh, uh, Glenn attended church tonight. Uh, uh, not that Glenn stayed home and said, Pastor, I was there in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> if the entire congregation did that, then what fun would we have? You see? But you come. And you come in your body. Praise the Lord. Amen. So um, I'm so happy tonight. I'm so happy that I'm, I can say our names were on the seals here. And the devil's trick and trap was to try to destroy our ancestors. Amen. That's the reason why some of you see there, Brother Brandon went through the same thing. The devil tried to kill you. Mm -hmm. You know what? Even when you were young. How many of you can think back? I know of times. Now I know. Why I almost died from drowning. Mm -hmm. Why I almost died when I fell on, on my uh, family's um, uh, shop, machining shop, and grabbed a hold of the uh, electric wire about this size. You're supposed to be dead. Mm -hmm. But instead, I felt a hand went like this. Miracle. Mm -hmm. And then I looked around to see there was nobody there. But I wasn't going to tell anybody because I would get uh, 
<laughs> my parents, oh Lord have mercy, I'm going to tell them about climbing up there to do that? Wow, no, so I never told them for me, amen, but after the message came, then he starts saying, I was there, I was there. I stood on the corner, like I said, look, look, uh, I'm so short now, just imagine when I was uh, nine or ten years old, and I have a bigger kite than my, my size, mm -hmm. and the wind blew on the kite, and I'm falling already, and the car is already there. There's no way you can turn back. You're already on this angle. Then all of a sudden, I felt like a wind blow, and I'm back on my feet like this. And you're a child, you're wondering, what was that? But then you forgot while you were off with your kite, then you were gone with your friend. But now, when the Holy Spirit comes and you get saved, then you think, oh, you realize that was the hand of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. See, Brother Brendan climbed up uh, when he went, you know, when he was up on the, uh, he was, uh, what do you call them, lines man, where they fix the, the, the wires for the electric company. And he was up there fixing it, and the devil wrote him, and his, you know, his wife died. This happened, and he wants to, yeah, I'm going to commit suicide. And he puts his hand out to go like that to hold the wires, and just then a dog said, look down. When he looked down, his shadow <laughs> is in the image of the cross. He has his hands out stretched to hold the wires, and there he is on the post. So it looked like a cross. He said, I cried like a baby. He said, I don't even know how I got on the ground. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Predestinated for a purpose. Amen. God Amen. had the name here Thank you, beneath Lord. the seals yes, for his purpose. Amen. Listen to yes, the word. First seal. Amen. The members of the bride, their names were put in the Lamb's book of life before the foundations of the world. So you're older than this earth. Your soul, your, your soul is older than this earth. Your names were put on the book of life before, excuse me, the foundation of the world. And if you were in God and you're eternal as God's eternal, you're older than this earth. Right? right? Praise the Lord. Amen. But it was, it was sealed up. See? God sealed up their names. Now it's being revealed whose names were in there. Amen. All about it. What a great thing is happening now. For see, he said that. That that's where your names were. Your names were hidden under the seals. But of course, in another part of the seals, he said, I don't mean your name, James. Susie, but your name, God, the name that God gave you before the foundations of the world. Amen. See, Jesus, his name was what? Jehovah, Elohim. But Brother Bram said, when he came to the earth as the word made flesh, God allowed uh, Joseph and Mary to give him an earthly name. Yeah. And that earthly name was Jesus. Your earthly name is whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But then you're going to get back your name. You're going to recognize your, by then you will call it a new name. Praise God. You, you will recognize who you are. And your new name is a part of the world. And when uh, a preacher preaches that part of the word that your name is represented by or is fond of, even you're not hearing us, we use the word name, you're thinking of a natural name. But when a person speaks that part of the word that fits your character, because name, nature, character, and so on. I'm not teaching on that. But the fact is, the preacher is preaching, he's preaching on the word, and he might not even know what, what's happening, but your name is under certain scriptures, it hits your heart. Certain revelation is under that word, it hits your soul. The deep calls to the deep. Amen. And then the deep has to respond. Amen. Why? Because you are part of the word. Mm -hmm. And when that part of the word, it fits your soul like a hand in a glove. Amen. 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 That's not a man. Amen. Amen. That's God doing that. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God does that. Amen. So our names were hid 
you need to see us. Amen. Now, we know that the people whose names were not on the those seals that wouldn't catch the revelation of it truly, they will be deceived. They will be deceived because they have no anchor. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and you are anchored in the kingdom of God. Amen. You have blessed assurance. That's right. See, we, we, I'm pulling you away from all the Pentecostal believers. You have blessed assurance because you believe. Uh, you know, I believe in Jesus, I believe in you. But you have blessed assurance because we have an anchor that keeps our soul. What is that anchor? The foundation stone, the word in, in Daniel 7, week, he says, has been laid in you before the foundation of the world. That's yeah. right, predestination. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The foundation stone. So your anchor who? It's Christ. Amen. The anchor is, your Holy, is the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that's keeping you. Yes. The grace granted on all our sins. That's right. Amen. His grace is what keeps us. Amen. Not by our strength. Mm -hmm. Not by our own wisdom. Mm -hmm. Not by any length of time we've been in the message. Mm -hmm. No man could boast. Amen. We are kept by the power of God through faith. Amen. Revelation. Amen. That's what we're kept by the power of God. Amen. Through faith. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, listen what he says here in uh, the first seal, page 172. And the Bible says that the he, the devil, deceived all. He said, A-L-L, upon the face of the earth, whose names were not written under them seals. Amen. From the foundation of the world, now if the Bible said he did it, he did it. He hid them names under those seals. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh my, aren't you glad that the seals are broken? Amen. Amen. Yes. He was the seal of the Father, and that had to be broken so the Holy Spirit could be made manifest, and we could be made manifest. Amen. 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 Glory to God. In the last day, these seals are broken to make what? The Word of God made manifest. But it's not just a written word. You are the Word. You are the unveiling of the mighty God today. Amen. It's God in flesh again. Not in Jesus, but in his bride. Right. And you are the flesh he's living in for this hour. Mm. That's why we live holy. That's why we live consecrated. That's why we live according to the word of the hour. Mm. Not, because the, not just because the Bible is telling us it, but because it's now in our heart and we want to do it. Amen. Amen. We want to do it because we love Him. Amen. You know what that means? It's putting you back on free moral agency where the prophet said they can sin. When the Adam and Eve were on free moral agency, they were sons of son and daughter of God. Amen. And they, they could sin or not sin. Praise God. Because they were already on a free moral agency. And just as that Eve had to be tested by the serpent, and that one failed, he said, this last day one will be tested also. Satan's even is very defined that. Hey, uh, it will be tested also by Satan face to face, speaking through man. As the, many of the theologians, false teachers, you know, even preachers of the message that will misdirect you, uh, you will, by revelation and by discernment will recognize that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Not by comparing scripture with scripture. That, that's not enough. Just by comparing scripture with scripture. That, that just means that somebody has a sharper mind than the other one. Or uh, one can quote the scripture a little better. But that don't mean nothing. He says, one revel genuine revelation to my old washed woman will take her home. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Because the veil is ripped now. And she's entered beyond the veil. And will walk into the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. No. Yes. So some people are going to be deceived. But it's the devil is going to at least make, try to deceive the elect. But the Bible tells us it's impossible. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, not the elected can only be temporarily thrown off course. Amen. Right? The devil can divert you into a Catholic church. Divert you into the Methodist. Divert you into the Baptist church. But that's only for a while. 
Because there's a hunger that's going to be in there, that thirst that he cannot fulfill. Mm -hmm. Only the word of God can fulfill it. Right. I mean the revealed word, not just the Bible, but the revealed word is the only thing that can fulfill it. Because you have a thirst for God himself. Praise the Lord. And you're going to be seeking, searching. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh my, like the old prophets of old, they're wandering in sheepskins and goatskins from place to place. He said, searching for a, a city where a city of rest, a place where they can rest. In the same way, you might have been church to church, been here, you've been there. What are you searching for? Your soul was actually searching for the revealed word of God that it can find a resting place. Amen. The Bible says the, the, the sparrows have made the, the altar their nest upon thy altar. The resting place upon thy altar, O God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me stand upon the promises of Christ. My Amen. Let me let me say like the saints in heaven when the brother Graham said, but, but I preach what all preach. They said, we are resting on that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my strength and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The seals are open, he said. And he says, now the Spirit is calling out the names of the elect. Mm -hmm. In the church age book, he says, he's, the great shepherd is now calling his sheep. Amen. Mm -hmm. Calling them, even though he, and, and changing the patterns of their body, even though they have not fallen asleep. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you hear your body calling at supper time? Come home. Come home. It's time for the wedding supper of the Lamb. Praise God. And the Lamb. Hallelujah. Oh, I remember when I, I go back there, it's so wonderful. When I was a boy in childhood and, and, and supper would be ready, we'd be playing, we'd be doing this, and, and your mother would just give up. Uh, let me use a, the, the commonplace word, a holler out of the kitchen window. <laughs> you, you, you drop whatever you're doing and rush and try to wash up and get in there so that you can dive into those homemade chops or meat or whatever, fish or whatever you prepare. It was just wonderful. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it's so funny, it tasted sweeter than a now I can afford to buy any meat, any fish I want, but the fish that she cooked back then tasted sweeter. Nothing like your mother's cooking and baking, is that right? It's so different. That's the way God made us. Praise God. And uh, it's the same thing. There's a difference between the theologian preaching and, and God's cooking. Amen. God's word. Amen. God's meals. God's food. Is that right? One day we're going to have that great chef is going to serve us up a seven-course meal. Amen. Praise God. Is that right? Amen. I think he's serving it already. That's right. Seven-course meal. Praise Amen. God. Prepared by the hand of God himself. Because this was all prepared before the foundation of the world and prepared for you. Praise God. Amen. Just I'm going to use the last quote and then I'm going to start winding this up. Or else we're going to go off into a major uh, preaching message here. Now, now, he says, I am thinking of that awful hour that is approaching. And there is no more way to stop it. It is predicted that it would come. But of course, I know that you have said that they wouldn't. So they won't. But there is something that have, there are some people that have got their names already written on the Lamb's Book of Life. And when their seals are thrown open there, they begin to see their names there. Amen. Praise God. Are you starting to see your name there? Amen. Oh, praise God. See means from the sun. That's what it means. It don't mean you're good with your eyes. But you begin to understand. Praise God. If I said, see, see, I mean, see what I mean? See? 
because he wants the person to understand. So that's what the scripture is telling you here. They will see or understand that their names were him under those seals. Praise Amen. God. I'm going to preach furthermore from another angle of this because the breaking of the seals identifies you and gives you certainty of who you are. Mm -hmm. Because if you were not part of the bride, then you wouldn't have a clear revelation right. of seeing the word made flesh or mm -hmm. revealed to you like that. Mm -hmm. So the word identifies you. You identify the word and the word identifies you. Remember John the Baptist and Jesus? Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus was coming down to the water to be baptized. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. What did he do? He identified the word of the hour. Because he was what? He was the predestinated prophet that had to be there to identify that word. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Was a prophet, a predestinated body that God works through. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But at the same time, the Bible had prophesied um, uh, that God crying in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. So when he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taken away the sins of the world, he identified the word, but the word that was written also identified him. Amen. Amen. Right. So when you receive the word of the hour by revelation, Hallelujah. You identify it that that's the truth. I believe it. Praise Amen. God. Amen. That's the word. Amen. Right. That's the land Amen. that will take away Amen. my sin. This is a message without spot or wrinkle. Amen. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. When you do that, it also identifies you as bride. That's right. Hallelujah. Is that right? Amen. It identifies you as bride. Amen. Because you then become the body, just like John was the body predestinated to be there to recognize the word when it came on the scene. Hallelujah. You was predestinated to be at this age to identify the word for your hour, Amen. to recognize the, your day and the word for your day. Hallelujah. Thank and say, recognize it, to say it, the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. When the seals are thrown open there, they begin to see their names there. And the Holy Spirit speaks to them then, and they come. You just can't keep them away anymore. No one can. And it repeats again. No one can. Once they see it, no one can. Praise God. Because they recognize who they are. Brother Brown himself said that when, when the seals broke to him and he understood it, he said, I recognize that I was not really the son of Charles and Ella Branham. It was just his earthly parents. But my father in heaven, oh Jehovah God, I am your son. I'm coming home to thee. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You recognize that your heavenly father you are a spirit being, and your Father in heaven is the God of heaven, the God of the universe. Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh my. No one can keep them away. They are coming anyhow, and they are coming because you are the one that's leading them. Second seal, page 224. God led you here tonight. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Brother Graham said, do you really think you just walked into this service like that? Amen. He says, no. He said, this Holy Spirit led you here tonight. The same Spirit that led Simeon to the Christ is the one that led you here tonight. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You see me? Oh, my. Praise God. Elijah and all the apostles were men of like passions Amen. as we are. They were flesh. They were not supernatural beings or spacemen. They were just regular people like you. Amen? They got, uh, you know, the, they went in the temple. Sometimes they were tired when they had to go to worship and serve God just like you. Right? Nobody wants to say amen. <laughs> <laughs> and I admit that maybe you came to church a little tired after work. Uh, That's the truth. Amen. It's the truth. We just flesh. We just here to worship and serve the Lord. I'm trusting, O oh God, that I am one of them. 
that's going to find my name here tonight behind this seal that was put in there from the foundation of the world and something strikes my heart and I'm standing here Lord is it me Lord are you using this all in me I want you to reveal to me that my name is over there praise God hallelujah amen fill me and seal me into yourself Lord by the Holy Ghost that my name is over there second seal page 227 I, I, I'll end the lesson here an old song just came to my mind is my name written there in the book bright and fair in the book of thy kingdom is my name written there amen, amen. now I can sing that and say yes my name's written there <laughs> in the book bright and fair in the book of thy kingdom I know that my name is written there because the prophet said you are certain of God yeah, it's right. revealed to you you're not guessing anymore right. I know that I know Amen. that I know Amen. and I'm standing on those promises praise Amen. the Lord Jesus Hallelujah. isn't it wonderful Thank you. that our names were on the seal yes, or the devil will have destroyed every one of us yeah. Amen. Amen. You just have to think about it. And you know the devil threatened you. Some of you from birth, some of you before you even born. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. The devil tried to either kill your mother or your father or something else like that. But you're here by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. You're here Amen. because he allowed you to be here. That's right. And the brother explained that. Right. He says you realize that a, a, a million germs go forth. And only one manifested a child. Amen. You happen to be in that one. That's why you're here. That's right. He says, so even coming here naturally, it wasn't by chance. Yes, God allowed you to be here. Amen. So that he could know you. Mm -hmm. Yes, he knew me. Yes, he loved me. Mm -hmm. Oh, praise God. He who caused the stars to shine. God mm -hmm. knew us Amen. before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. I don't know what more we can say to make you love him more. Mm -hmm. We have to love him every day. Amen. We have to love him with all our heart. Yes. Because he's a God rich in mercy. Amen. Is that right? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank Thanks to Calvary. Thanks to Calvary. I'm here tonight. Hallelujah, Lord. May Thank God you, Lord. speak to every one of your hearts Hallelujah. tonight and draw you closer to him and say, Lord, I want to walk as close Hallelujah. as I possibly can.